This is my 1987 BMW K75. It's the basic model, the one without any fairings. And although it's showing 21,000 on the clock, these are replacement clocks, and it's done at about 85,000 miles. It's been in the store for quite a while. The winter's been hard here and wet and miserable, and everyone's been ill. And the other day when I looked through the window, I noticed there's this burn mark and that is from where the master cylinder has decided that it's going to leak and you can see that the level is right down there. Normally that's up to max. The first thing to decide was whether it was leaking from here because there's an o-ring in the base of that but there's no fluid here and there is fluid underneath. Also if you squeeze this You squeeze it it makes a puffing sound um, so it's time to change the seals in the master cylinder I need to order a seal kit which will probably come from motor bins or motor works but I need to find out what size seal kit because apparently there's two sizes 13 and 16 and it says it's written on there I've been looking in the wrong place for the size it's actually really obvious and it is actually molded just there um, and that one says 13 so that should make it easy for me to work out what I need to order the parts for the master cylinder have arrived very quickly within three days this is the seal for the reservoir this is a new banjo bolt this is the actual assembly which comes fixed together already, which is four new copper washers. A nice thing about this assembly is it also gives you a new circlip, which I was wondering where I was going to have to reuse or buy a new one for that. I'm just looking in the Haynes manual at the exploded diagram, and it tells me that I can take this unit off by undoing two Allen headed screws and remove it completely from the bike. So. I'm going to do that. My aim is to take the unit off the bike so they can put it in uh, my little workshop. At the moment my bike is in this shed and I can't actually get it out because I've hurt my back and if I did get it out I won't be able to get it back in so it's easier just to dismantle it on site. I'm going to use the bike tools which are in the back under the saddle and everything that I need is wrapped up in this tool roll. This is the original tool kit and I'm going to need this star headed screwdriver which isn't quite a Phillips and isn't quite a posi drive because that fits the screws on the brake cap exactly. I'm going to take the cap off first and then drain all the fluid out of it with a siphon and this screwdriver fits this absolutely perfectly. The two at the front are the same length, the one at the back is slightly shorter. Just carefully lift the cap off because underneath there's a concertina covered in oil. I'll put that in a pot. I've put a cloth over the paintwork to make sure it doesn't get damaged. If you look in there you can see that the brake fluid is low. It's also very clean. It wasn't that long ago that I did it and I need to dismantle this to put a new seal in it. There's a seal down in there, I want to change that. First I'm going to suck out the fluid that's here. I've got this little syringe that came with the bleed kit and I'll just put it in there and suck out all the fluid that I can get out of it. So that's as much as came out and that's going to be thrown away now. There are two screws holding it on, one's here it's hard to see and the other one is under here just here but I think first I'll take off the banjo because otherwise it's going to be under tension I'm taking out this side first with that Allen key from the toolkit um, see that's not a particularly long screw that one I've taken the lever off simply by undoing the nut and pushing the pin out. There's the part that the lever pushes on 
and this part here in here is the end of the switch for the brake light I've taken it out because I want to clean all this out and give it a good greasing up before it goes back together I've just tapped it loose with the wheel wrench and a few judicious taps and it actually just freed itself off you can see that it's pretty gungy uh, the other thing I wasn't quite expecting is that the drive for the um, throttle is in there, the chain um, so that's going to be a bit of a fiddle getting that back together I think I've given it a good scrub with white spirit you can see that it's now relatively clean and you can also now see the circlip that's how much dirt came out of it obviously I don't want that going back into it I need to now carefully clean that now I want to change the o-ring that sits in the base of this and there's a screw there that allows me to undo that and gently pull that off so I'm going to do that first It's pretty stiff. Oop. There we go. And I need to replace that O ring. You can see it's quite crusty around there, that all needs cleaning as well. And then I'm going to clean inside the unit again with white spirit just to get any bits out. I've been struggling to get this circlip out and it's seized in there. So I've been using a sharp screwdriver to clean it all up and now I need to get a decent pair of circlip pliers because the cheap nasty ones I've got are just not doing the job I wasn't really thinking this was going to be that hard but it doesn't want to come out so that circlip proved to be a right bugger to get out and in the end I used needle nose pliers and I kept pinching it, kept pinching it and then suddenly it popped out because obviously this is all under tension so hopefully this part should now just kind of slide out you can see the seals inside it and that comes out oh, like that and the interesting thing is that hasn't got that big washer on it Look. so oh, I wonder what the big washer is for having gone onto the internet this washer and this seal sits in the handlebar and housing um, and forms a seal to where the actual lever is these parts go on the handlebar housing that's still on the bike I put the reservoir back on and with the new seal with the tiny bit of oil on it that just easily pushed in and the screws gone back in that was a very simple job I'm very happy the way that went back together when I took the circlip out I noticed that there was some red grease in the groove so I've dug out all the old dirty grease and I'm going to put in a little bit of uh, bicycle grease into there just to help that seat. I've wound the assembly in just by turning it with a little bit of oil on it and I'm holding it in with my thumb and then I'm trying to put the circlip in with... Oh, ah, well that went straight in. That was a bit of luck. So the circlip went straight in. You have to remember with these new circlips, they're actually handed. There's a flat face and a round face. Whereas the old one that came out of it, that's flat on both sides. Probably could have reused that, but it's a bit rusty. I've just filled the reservoir up with oil while I go and have my tea. And if I understood it right, this shouldn't leak until you push that that way and that creates the pressure so we'll see how that works out if by the time I come back there's oil everywhere I'll know I've done that wrong I've left it all night and as far as I can see it hasn't leaked out of anywhere it shouldn't leak that's all looking good so now we can put it back on the bike and reassemble it these little streaks of black dirt are bothering me so I've got some cocktail sticks to scrape them out and the thing with the cocktail sticks is you can get right into the very small gaps 
uh, and then you can break them in half to make them into sort of fatter paint brushes just to get the stuff out. I'm just using it to loosen it up and then I'll wash that out with um, brake fluid to get that out. Probably not a good idea to wash it out with white spirit now that the new seals are back in there. I've cleaned out the hand grip mount and when I did the seal that was in there just popped out on the floor. So I must remember that that goes back in there um, otherwise that's all looking lovely and clean now. I'm going to grease everything up with um, CV joint grease because that's all I've got and that lasts virtually forever. I've been using CV lith moly grease so this is for the constant uh, velocity joints on your car. It is amazing stuff and it seems to last forever. I've used the CV joint grease to stick in this rubber seal and the metal um, washer that's on the back so they're held in with grease while I then try to introduce the unit back on. So I put the reservoir unit back on I thought that was going to be really difficult so I didn't film it but it actually just went straight on. You have to hold the chain part in place but it just literally went doot, and it was on. So I've just got to put the two securing screws in now. I put the first screw in just here and that was quite sticky so I greased it up with CV grease and the second one which is just here this one's going in much easier I've got a slight problem in that I've got a screen on my bike and that bar is actually in the way of the Allen key. So getting in, this in as far as it can before it's done up is a really good idea. Going to reconnect the brake line and I bought a new banjo bolt which obviously goes through there with a copper washer on either side. Um, the sharp eyed amongst you will see that I haven't got a standard um, hose here. This is the standard hose that came off it and the reason I had to change it is because I've got handlebar risers and when you put that on it no longer reaches. At some point in the future when I, um, when I renovate this bike I shall put all these parts back on. You might also look at this and go well that's a bit long isn't it? And the reason it's like that is because I can actually take these bars off and put drop bars on it and turn it into a cafe racer and I need the extra length for doing that. I'm going to put the hand grip back on um, so that's a kind of cotter pin with a nut on the other end grease both faces of that grease the pin and then introduce it into the unit and it'll just go in there like that that's all nicely back together. Because this is a cotter pin you have to tap it in and the nut under, on the underside is a self-locking nut so you put a screwdriver in there and you do it up. I find it's better to actually turn this and hold the nut still because then you know that this pin is nice and free and nice and greased up so that you get a nice smooth action. I'm now going to reverse bleed the brakes. Obviously this line is completely full of air now but only as far as there so I only need to do it on one side and I'll force the fluid up from the front caliper up to here, into here and fill this up. I'm going to put a little bit of oil in here to start with just to make sure there's no binding. If you gently squeeze the lever it drives the air out at the top, which is sort of half the job done really isn't it? It's actually stiffening up, it's still got to be bled from down below but it's stiffening up already. Well, I wasn't expecting that to be honest, cool. Yeah. Well, that's as stiff as anything but this line must be still full of air. I bought a brake bleed kit which was essentially two of these 
but this is really too small to mo for my bike so I've got this uh, much bigger one as the feed I can put a lot of oil in there and that will attach straight on and I'll only need it to fill it up once once you start pumping up this is going to fill up you use the other syringe to suck out the oil that's the big syringe on there all ready to go it's connected in all I need to do now is just loosen this and pump the oil through and do it slowly that should be fully flushed out if you pull handle you see it's working properly there's no air coming out of it and this is actually really solid you can't pull that back to the handlebar so that's correct oh a little bit of air coming out there see that yeah. no, that's looking good just need to put the top back on now then. When you put the top back on, remember that the concertina inside raises the level. So you only really want it about half full before you put the top on. And then put the screws back in. Remembering the two front ones are slightly longer than the back one. And that's it. Job done. So the only real way to test the brakes now is to take it out for a road test because you need to get the brake fluid heated up down in the calipers there to see if it's still working properly but this is lovely and firm there's no squishiness before it just went <laughs> made a horrible noise and you could pull it right back to the handlebar uh, also check that you haven't screwed up your throttle um, and that's working fine all looking good hopefully that will now last another 33 years Brilliant.